If you idiotically acquired an exotic animal that began slashing through your friend group like a serial killer disguised as a kid's toy, what would you do? You know, the thing about a sloth is he's got lifeless eyes, black eyes, like a doll's eyes. When he comes at you, he loves every single second of the end of your life. This co-ed just wanted a cute, unusual social media pet to help her go viral, but now it's picking off her sorority like it made a bet with the devil and the collection has come due. Let's see if we can survive the carnage. I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat the killer sloth in Slother House. In Panama, an animatronic sloth gets plucked off a branch by a crocodile and emerges moments later with murder in its beady little eyes. Welcome to adulthood, little guy. Nearby, the world's laziest hunters hit it with a trank and haul it away, oblivious to the sloth's most recent victim floating belly up nearby. In an American town where everyone has exchanged their personality for social media avatars, we meet Emily. She's too sweet for her own good, and going after a sorority president position hoping it'll make her popular. She saves a purse rat from a grisly death and runs into Oliver, an exotic animal dealer who tried to upsell her a sloth, claiming they're more sorority friendly than dogs are. What? You too good for a locally sourced possum, Emily, at her sorority? We meet, well, we meet way too many girls to keep up with. Just rest assured, you will never find a more wretched bubblegum pink hive of scum and villainy in this part of the galaxy. The current sorority president, Brianna, is kind of like a mafia princess made out of plastic, a nightmare in fuchsia, and a tyrant already set to be president again this year by default. With a little drunken encouragement from her house mother, Emily texts Oliver and tells him she wants the sloth. He tells her to come by and pick it up at his sketchy warehouse the next day. Yeah, no. If I'm about to shell out up to $10,000 for an exotic pet, the least you can do is deliver it to the enclosure we're going to cobble together before you get here. Even though sloths sleep upwards of 20 hours a day, they're hightailing it through the tree canopies the rest of the time. Sloths prefer high, dark, sleeping nooks and a variety of branches off the ground to explore. They spend the majority of their awake time sourcing tasty leaves and prefer a variety of paths through the foliage. Meaning zoos often move around branches and sticks to mix it up in their enclosures. Zookeepers will also use misting machines or fans to mimic rainstorms so the sloths can fade. Lately, I've been trying to live my best James Bond life by enjoying a little prime gambling time with today's sponsor, DraftKings Casino, America's number one online casino. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of doom scrolling rolling in the bathroom and disassociating at the line of the bank. I want something that'll fill my time with fun and the potential to win cool prizes. DraftKings Casino has you covered. Not only do they offer slots, classic blackjack, and roulette, but they have a catalog of over 300 real money games, all just to download away. This one can win you cash prizes. This year, holidays are on the house with DraftKings. They're offering all new customers a huge deal. Just play $5 on the app and receive $100 in casino credits instantly to use on their games. Download the DraftKings Casino app now. Use my promo code, NerdExplains, and have this bad boy in your pocket come holiday season when you're trapped with family. Thanks to DraftKings Casino for partnering with me on this video. So cute. Now, this specific evil weirdo is a three-toed sloth, which means it's even more specific in its diet than its two-toed cousins. They eat leaves almost exclusively from three genuses, which grow in the tropics. I hope your sorority sisters like the smell of high humidity, musky soil, cause you're gonna need a few dozen of those plants to fill your room and feed your new Pokemon. You're also going to need to train it so you can give it a weekly examination for parasites. I mean, unless you like waking up to warm, gentle, brown rain of diarrhea pattering across your body. After the call, Oliver takes the sloth out of its cage to prepare it for sale and receives a razor sharp dose of karma. <laughs>
Emily arrives the next day and invites herself inside when no one answers the door. Sure, why make your own kidnapping a challenge? Inside, she finds the sloth chilling and a tiger roaming around and just takes her a furry prize home. Sweet, a free beastie. And look, he washed his bloody hands before we got here and everything. He's already better than my last three roommates. By the time M gets back with the sloth, Rihanna's hurt Emily might run against her and accosts her in the stairs, pitching the box in her hand over the railing to the floor below. Emily introduces the sloth to the whole house, who almost unanimously agree to keep it as a mascot named Alpha. With her social score skyrocketing, M also announces her run for sorority president. She hangs her new pet from her bunk bed and gives Alpha a flower to eat, angering her friend Madison, who points out it might be toxic for all she knows. Madison tries to take the flower away and gets bitten for the effort. What a fun way to lose a hand to infection, or come down with a fun case of leash maniasis, which will come with fever, organ swelling, and skin lesions that leave lifelong scars. Totally worth it once Emily sees the immediate response across her social media profiles, and all the new pledges slothing to join her sorority. The little demon seems happy about the situation too, all the scratches it can want, and a life of grumpy cat fame ahead of it. At least until it scrolls through Emily's social media feed, spots the random candid pic M snapped with Oliver at the mall. Ooh. At that night's party, Alpha gets another glimpse of humanity's worst when Brianna peer pressures Sarah into killing Alpha. She leaves it outside where it's nearly hit by a car. Alpha's waiting in her room when she gets back. Sarah leaves her drink unattended and Alpha spikes it. <laughs> Then, Alpha slashes Sarah straight off the sorority roster. Turns out, Pixar's next axe murderer has two great skills. First, body disposal. This sloth is so resourceful, none of its victims are found for weeks. The second skill is murder. When the girls play dodgeball and one throws a ball right at Alpha's face, the thrower wakes up to find Alpha trapping her in her sleeping bag and hurling her off the second floor railing. Okay, this kicks off our furry little mascot's murderous rampage. The evil genius goes bolder, targeting Emily's best friend Madison right in front of her, making it look like an accident. Don't go. By the time the girls are voting in the next sorority president, Alpha's picking off co-eds like it's the reincarnation of Ted Bundy. Election night turns out to be a witchy bacchanal full of red robes and cat fighting. While the humans are busy doing boring sh Alpha steals M's keys and phone, sets a GPS course for the hospital, and speeds off to finish Madison herself. <laughs> Hey, uh, Madison, Maddie, I know you're injured or whatever, but did it nuke your vocal cords? Try screaming. Also, all these hospitals have call buttons. Spam that thing like your life depends on it. Hopefully, someone loves you enough to change your headstone epitaph from killed by a sloth to killed by a tiger or something. You lose double rep points getting killed by a creature with a name that literally means laziness. Still p from losing her spot as sorority president, Brianna goes to track down her missing voters and finds one dead in the shower as Alpha watches nearby. But Alpha has forgotten her sin. She grows too prideful. M catches her attacking Brianna in an upstairs bedroom. <laughs> M whacks it off with a book and they take shelter in the bathroom. M arms herself with a toilet tank lid, which I respect, and emerges just as Brianna shuts herself back inside. Alpha attacks and M bats her out the window, but it isn't enough to kill her. Of course it isn't. That's a Panamanian jungle god cosplaying as a stuffed animal. Alpha slips back in and messes with the bathroom temperatures while the girls are doing trust showers, whatever those are. She scalds one girl, then strips the electrical wires and fries them all. Look, 
this is fun nonsense, but half these girls are wearing shoes with rubber soles, so they're only feeling the jolt if some part of their body is in contact with the water or wire. Em retrieves a gun from another co-ed's room and ventures downstairs to take care of their pest problem. At the bottom of the stairs, Em loses the gun when another girl crashes into her, and then she doesn't retrieve it when the sloth attacks nearby. <laughs> The gun is right there. You idiots. So dumb. Especially as the second girl gets yoinked away within grabbing reach of the gun. <laughs> Alpha chases him to her bedroom. And if you know where Alpha is, you know where it isn't. It's at the door. So head for the window. Grab a weapon. Create a flamethrower using an aerosol bathroom spray and a lighter. Use your time wisely. Alpha punches a hole in the door. <laughs> Oh god, and beckons him to approach. These sloths are way stronger than I remembered. Alpha taunts her with a selfie she took of Madison before killing her. M saved for the moment when the sorority drunk house mother comes out of her vodka cave and sees the blood everywhere. She grabs the house racket. Bat? Mallet? Paddle? What a, one of those. And brains the sloth repeatedly with it. Are you ready to get rushed? Hey, Alpha! You ain't got no Alpha! Turns out, Jin might be a superpower. Unfortunately, she doesn't continue bashing it to pulp, which would be my recommendation. Really, wrap it immediately in a curtain, hoodie, blanket, trash bag, or whatever's in reach, and shove it into a lockable piece of furniture, or a room with only one door. As far as we're concerned, it's not over until Animal Control, the local zoo, and the X-Files have come to take its pieces away. The house mom runs into M's room and says she killed the sloth, but Alpha dispels that fantasy pretty immediately. <laughs> Meanwhile, Alpha just says, it and starts posting her kill selfies to her own social media profile. M's boyfriend, Tyler, sees them and rushes over to help hunt the little greedy serial killer down. Another girl named Zenny also appears, having survived the showers because, you guessed it, she was wearing rubber-soled shoes. They collect Brianna and silently move through the house, but only one of these people has any survival instinct at all. Alpha knocks them all out like a bowling ball with claws. <laughs> Zenny's up and fighting a second later, throwing knives like she's trying to win a giant bear at a carnival. Of course, she botches every throw. She does come in swinging with a katana and finally impales furry Chucky with it. For God's sake, someone cut off its head. That doesn't seem to occur to these people. Or the fact that Alpha may be an old god trapped in the puppet of a pug-nosed clown. Alpha rises for her last stand when gunshots ring out from down the hall. It's Madison, who was brought back to life by capable hospital staff, who then casually looked the other way when she walked out the front door and drove herself home. Maddie goes gangland on Alpha's Afterward, M picks up the katana to finish it off, but Alpha rolls away and disappears. Just to clarify, you guys are getting ninja'd by a sloth, okay? Just wanna make sure that that's very well known. As Tyler and Madison whisk Zenny off to the hospital, M remains to save Brianna. Alpha already has her. Alpha motions for M to toss away the sword. She doesn't know about the gun. Alpha begins the fight. M tries to fire the gun, but misses. So she turns the tiara the sloth is wearing upside down and crushes it into Alpha's head, then crawls for the gun and fires, knocking it back. As she goes to land the killing blow, Alpha motions to a framed photo of Panama on the wall, and M takes pity on her. In the end, Alpha's returned to the wild with a crazy abduction story to tell the other jungle critters before she kills them. As for the remaining sorority sisters, well, who cares? They learned the obvious. Get your wild animals local, organic, and cage-free whenever possible. I'm joking. We all know what happened to Carol Baskin's husband. Look, this one's a no-brainer. Don't keep wild animals as pets, especially highly dangerous apex predators like sloths. If you stumble across an exotic wild animal, Animal, call an exotic animal veterinary center and ask for a rehabilitator or nature rescue organization who can take it off your hands. Now, if you're speed scrolling through this video looking for solutions because you 
you've already trapped yourself in a house with a crazed beast and need help ASAP. Well, I don't really want to help you. A bunch of times here, we saw Alpha get whacked or thrown or bashed like a normal animal. Now, obviously, she's really a friend of the King in Yellow, some gnarly pagan entity, but she still has a physical body that several of these people almost killed. So just do that faster and don't stop until she's in several pieces and preferably those pieces are reduced to mush. For those reasons, I think Slother House was the... Honestly, these co-eds are pretty annoying, so I'm team Sloth. 